if you've got any handyman skills at all, even if you're a novice handyman, but if you can operate a drill, if you can operate a screw gun, if you can operate a rivet gun, you can read a tape measure, and you've got a little bit of common sense, you can do this. You do not have to have the dealer to do this. Um, you don't have to have a mobile tech to do it. If you have the tools, if you if you want to do it, again, some people just don't want to do stuff like this. They would don't want to get their hands dirty, and that's, that's okay. I prefer to do my own work. Um, um, it's just me. A lot of our beers uh, rather take it to the dealer and pick it up, you know, two weeks or two months later. But this is something any RVer could do in, in probably one afternoon. Whether you're a full timer, whether you're a part timer, whether you're a weekend warrior, this this fix can be done while you're at a campground. If you're you know in an annual or preliminary stationary site and you just pull your camper there and it sits for months and months and you never travel with it, you can do it on site because you, every everything you're using is hand tools and stuff you can pick up at the hardware store. So hopefully this, this works for you. Um, good luck. And um, again, here we go. Hey everyone, this is John. Today's video, we're going to show how to repair, uh, well, probably more of a preventive maintenance than a repair on the Alliance Paradigm rear wall. Um, there's been a lot of, um, I call it complaints, uh, seen on some of the Alliance Facebook groups uh, of the rear wall starting to separate broken screws um, under the couch things of that nature so i'm going to show today the procedure to do some preventive maintenance on that if you have the broken screws under the couch and and do not have a shifted rear wall this is how you can prevent that from happening um, these same procedures will work if you've had a shifting rear wall with the exception if your wall has shifted or moved, you're going to have to get it back in place before you do any of this. Um, that's quite a bit more extensive. It, it might amount to using uh, ratchet straps and come-alongs and, and structural components to get that rear wall back in place, depending on how much it shifted. But if you don't have that going on, this will help prevent that from happening. Um, once you have all the tools, the hardware, um, the mindset to do this uh, realistically doing the insides is going to take you about an hour um, because there's two two portions you got to do the uh, the part behind the couch on the inside and then you have to do the door side and the off door side on the outside um, so the inside is going to take you about an hour the outside is going to take you uh, if everything goes good, you can probably get it done in a couple hours um, if it goes really good maybe an hour and a half um, just depends on what what obstacles you run into while you're doing it um so hopefully this video will help help you guys out um show you how to do some preventive maintenance um this this type or, or this procedure i'm going to show you on the inside um is only relevant to the i call it the rear living areas paradigms um such as if you've got the the models that have the rear kitchen this procedure will not work for you on the inside because you've got your refrigerator your sink your cabinets all of that is on the back wall so this procedure will only work if you have the the alliance rvs that have the couch on the rear wall it's not relevant for the uh the valors the toy haulers because you don't have this situation your rear wall is the drop gate the tailgate um to your to your garage uh, but all other alliances that have the rear wall with the couch on the rear wall this this inside procedure will work for you. For your other paradigms, your rear kitchen paradigms, the outside procedure will work for you. Um, I can't speak for any of the avenues because I haven't seen or heard of those, the, the, the Alliance Avenue brands having the, the rear wall separation. And I don't think this is applicable even on the outside for the toy haulers just because of the way they're, they're made so much differently with that garage in the back. But if you've got a paradigm, an alliance paradigm, anything but the rear, the rear kitchen ones, they've got two of them now, two rear kitchen models. But if it's not the rear kitchen model, this this inside preventive maintenance will work for you. And your mileage may vary, as the saying goes, on the outside. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Uh, good luck with all this.
Okay, we've got the couch, uh, the rear sofa um, pulled out. And from here you'll need your your drill your screw gun with the um, with the Robertson bit attachment. Now, <clears throat> once you pull this out, you can crawl down in here. And there's two brackets, one on each side, that's holding a little piece of angle iron that's holding the couch to the floor. Unscrew either one of these, the two in the floor or the two here, doesn't matter. Over to the other side, same thing, angle bracket, just for sanity, unscrew the same, unscrew the ones on the top or the ones on the floor. Now again, it doesn't matter. Right, now you can slide the couch back a little bit. So if you took it out, you took the top ones out like I did, you're going to have to kind of pick the couch up a little bit to get them over, which is no big deal. The couch is not all that heavy. You just pick it up, slide it out a little bit. And slide it almost to your, it's hitting your, your, center, your center kitchen island. Now, say from walking over that, pull this down. Okay, we've got the couch moved out to the kitchen island. We've got the back portion folded down, so it's basically just like you were going to sleep on it. Um, but it slid out from the rear wall as, as far as it would go to, to where you hit your kitchen island. This is plenty of room to work. Uh, gives you a couple of three feet of working area. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things on terminology, because uh, I'm going to probably interchange these words as, as I'm talking. So this is your angle iron on the floor. Um, I'll call this the floor side, the bottom, or the horizontal portion. Floor side, bottom, horizontal. You may hear me refer to this as wall side, vertical, um, or top. So top, vertical, wall, bottom, horizontal, floor. Either way, that's, that's what I'm talking about. All right. This is your infamous rear wall piece of angle iron um, that you've heard and read so many horror stories on of breaking off screws, etc. Um, I have already done this preventive maintenance, and so I, I, yours is not going to look like this. When you, when you first first get to it. This piece of angle iron goes from end table to end table. It does not run under the end tables. Just so you'll see, you can see right there, there's a little bit of gap between the, the angle and the end table. So it just goes end table to end table. From the factory, from Alliance, um, I'm fairly certain, I don't know this for a fact, I haven't talked to anybody at Alliance, but I'm fairly certain when they get this piece of angle iron from whoever manufacturer they're getting it from, it's already pre-drilled with holes. The holes are spaced. They start out from about three inches from the end and then they're spaced every 12 inches. So when this comes from the factory, when you pull your couch out the first time, there's going to be a hole every 12 inches on the top side and the bottom side every 12 inches you see i've got a hole every six inches i'll explain that in, in in just a minute so when you when you get this from the factory you're going to have one two three four five six seven holes on the top side seven holes on the bottom side spaced out every 12 inches when we finish with it we're going to have 13 holes on the top 13 holes in the bottom because we're going to go back in between Every 12 inches, we're going to go 6 inches and put a screw in the top and the bottom of each one. And you see, that's what I've done. And again, if, if it doesn't look like there's anything there, it is. There's a rivet or there's a black-headed screw right here. So trust me, there is a screw on the wall side and the floor side every 6 inches. So a few tools you'll need. You'll need a tape measure. You'll need a rivet gun with the interchangeable tips on it. Um, your rivet gun may or may not look like mine. You'll need um, a number two Robertson bit. You'll need a nut driver, uh, preferably a one that's, that's magnetic. This is a 5 16 You'll need a drill bit, at least a 3 16 drill bit. You'll need a drill that's got a um, 
preferably if it's got the chuck on it where you can set the torque and so when it gets to a certain portion it stops turning or, or kind of strips out the chuck if you will so it doesn't go in any deeper and you'll you may want to use your your screw gun if you don't have a screw gun just use your drill uh, i'll explain what you need each of them for oh by the way if you don't know the reason this piece of metal is called an angle iron is because it looks like that if you're looking at it from the end it looks like that it's in a 90 degree angle obviously this is not a piece of the the metal it's just for illustration but that's why it's called angle iron because it's at a 90 degree angle this piece of angle iron is what's called a one inch one inch by one eighth meaning it's one inch wide one inch tall and one eighth inch thick all the way around so it's a one inch by one eighth piece of angle so to do this i'll call it a repair but in this situation it's a preventive maintenance repair means something's busted broken you have to fix it um again this is this is not a fix this was preventive maintenance so what i did i went to lowe's and i or i went to lowe's any hardware store you can order them off amazon and you'll need some inch and a half you need some inch and a half tech screws um, which will work or if you have some these are number two robertson's i actually got these from alliance and they are inch and a half as, as well so inch and a half long but the tech screw that i'm using is just a slight bigger diameter than what comes from alliance either one will work if you have these it'll work but you need them need this these screws bigger than the screws that come out originally in comparison that little screw there which is an inch by about inch long and i think it's a number 14 size oh, i need to do a correction the original screws that came with mine holding the angle line to the back wall are one inch long by number eight tech screw one inch long by number eight i replaced them with an inch and a half by number 10 tech screw so the bigger size the bigger the number number eight's a little smaller number 10 is a little bigger number 12 is even a little bigger diameter of the screw sorry for any confusion that's what come, comes holding this angle iron to the wall to the floor originally from alliance um or at least it was in my application now the the floor under this vinyl is a piece of of membrane um and a three-quarter inch piece of osb and then under that is is the aluminum floor joist if you will we'll call it a floor joist i'm sure in rv industry terms it's called something different but there's a piece of aluminum underneath the osb so i just said there's a there's this little piece of vinyl which is not very thick maybe maybe a 16th inch thick maybe an eighth and you got three quarter inches worth of with osb so when you put a one inch screw through that you may have one thread maybe two threads getting into the aluminum floor joist maybe that much same thing on the rear wall on the rear wall there's the wall board which is nothing but vinyl so it's a sixteenth of an inch thick maybe um you've got wall board which is what an eighth of an inch thick maybe three sixteenths so let's just call it you got a quarter inch of wall boarding material between the vinyl and the wall board itself and then you've got your aluminum um wall plate just like in house construction there would be an a aluminum wall floor plate here and then the studs running up so you got the same thing you're going back through here and you may have a little bit more threads catching because it's not quite as thick so at the most there's half of these threads catching on the wall and maybe two threads at the most catching on the floor that's the flaw in the design with using these short screws and there being small diameter screws just 
in comparison, look at the difference thickness in what I went back with and what originally came with mine. All right, I've come back to the outside here. Um, I've already fixed this, but I took it back apart so I could illustrate what's happening or what you're doing, how you're making this preventive maintenance from the inside. So we've already doubled our screws, put longer screws, bigger screws on the inside, the piece of angle iron that's, that's on the inside. So here's a little sample of angle iron. It's right here. It's the same size as inside. It's one eighth thick by one inch angle. Right here is the subfloor. You can see this piece of wood right in here. That's the OSB subfloor. Um, not sure if you can see it, but right above that is the piece of um, flooring vinyl for the flooring. And then this is the the, the seal plate, if you will, or, or the floor plate for the wall. This is the back wall. There's the wall board for the back wall. So this piece of angle iron, the factory angle iron, when it's sitting in here, it's kind of in that position right there, if you will. It's um, it's in front of the wall board and it's above the floor floorboard, the OSB board. So. The original screws that came with this, with my RV, the original screws were this one inch long. And so when they were put in, they were put in and they went about that deep right there. And then they went about that deep right there. You can see they. this is a stuffed piece of um, the, the floor joist against the rear wall stuffed with a two by material not quite a two by four and you can see there's maybe maybe two threads maybe two threads into the wood uh, of the stuff parts not doing any good at all the back wall is not is not too bad that's pretty good right there good good threads into this aluminum but when we redo this we're putting an inch and a half screw back in and so that inch and a half screw We've got three quarters or more of thread actually in, in the wood here. So that's holding good. And we've got this rivet here. And there it, you see it the way it ex, expands out. It, it's, it's holding pretty good here. And then our longer screw that we're putting in here or that we're doubling up is getting us quite a bit more threads in here on this this piece of aluminum so hopefully that's all clear so that's that's how when you're doing it this fix from the inside with a piece of angle iron on, on the back wall on the interior and you're adding longer screws bigger screws rivets that gives you an idea of what you're actually fixing there so that's pretty good stuff right there uh, hopefully that helps a uh, little tidbit i'm actually laying under the RV now, that's the ladder rack. I'm on the door side, I'm laying under it, the very back corner, looking up the rear wall. So just to give you an example, um, this is an inch and a half screw. This is the, the length of screw that we're, we're replacing on that back wall. And I've got my sample piece of, a, of angle line showing as well. So when you put that screw in, you still got over half an inch probably close to three quarters of an inch of, of dead space from the tip of the screw to the, to the end of the fiberglass. So you're not going to poke through it, but you don't want to use anything longer than a one and a half inch screw. Uh, inch and three quarters will be pushing it, a two inch screw. You'll bust out the back wall. Just to keep that in mind. Also, what I found out with mine is there was about, I don't know, maybe a third of the screws were missing. So all together, I was supposed to have 14 screws, and I think I, there was maybe nine of them that were actually in the angle iron. There was there was three or four missing, meaning no screw in the hole. Um, they were either not put there or they had, had worked their way out, and I found them on the floor. Of the nine or ten that were actually in the angle when I, when I did this, 
there were three of them that the head was was all but broken off um and i'll show you this so here's one of them where the head was broken off and i and i dr drilled another screw hole right beside it and here's another one the head was broken off and i drilled another screw hole beside it so i think let's see there was two of those so of the nine that were in there two of them were broken off meaning not doing any holding so that left me seven screws that were holding this whole piece of angle iron in comparison i've replaced this with two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty twenty two twenty four twenty six screws and or rivets so needless to say a lot more holding power once this um modification is made all right <clears throat> enough about that so let, word of caution don't use the nut driver to take or to put any screw in feel free to use it to take the screws out but don't use them to put any screw in these things are notorious for breaking these and breaking these they get over torqued and it rings that head off um, the reason it does because there's enough impact of the, the the impact screw gun banging them in a little bit it, it heats these up and it makes it weak right at the head the weakest point of these screws is right at the head where it goes from the shaft to the to the head of the screw so use your drill with it set on a a torque of your choosing you are probably going to have to play around with this a little bit to find that happy medium where it actually runs the screw all the way in and then strips out the chuck so it doesn't screw anymore so what i did the original screw holes that were every 12 inches here here and here kind of where there's it looks like there's nothing but there's actually a rivet the original screw holes i took one screw out i repaired or modified one screw hole at a time i did not take all the screws out and then start from scratch all over i did took one out fixed that one put a new one in and moved to the next one now the reason you do that in that method is so you don't have you don't have to be concerned with the wall separating or shifting ever so slightly if you're taking one screw out putting one screw back in that same hole the wall is not going to move even if you only have a third of the screws holding it like i had at least they're holding something in place we take our drill bit and you want to put a little piece of tape this is blue tape you can use duct tape masking tape electrical tape it doesn't matter but come back no more than about a quarter inch from the tip of the drill bit and put a piece of blue tape now the reason you're doing that is so you don't drill but you, you want to have this as a guide so when you're drilling when you when your drill bit disappears into the wall and you touch the blue tape you stop drilling that way you don't drill all the way through the back wall okay so just for example here's a couple of screws i've taken out just so we can show how this works and so when you're drilling your hole when it goes in it's not going to go because it's a little bit tight when it hits that blue tape i stop drilling and that way i'm only through i'm only through the angle iron i'm not drilling into the wall so to speak it's unnecessary so once you, again, you would take a screw out, take a screw out, put your drill bit in with your depth guide. This is a 3 16 drill bit. You drill your hole here, you drill your hole here, and then in the original screw holes, you want to take one of these expanding rivets. Now, the little test to show you guys what this looks like this is a piece of quarter inch plywood um, and this is about how thick the wall is and the wall board or how thick the wall board is with with the vinyl on it and so when you're when you've got this screw this rivet in that hole and you expand it out this is the front side that you actually see that's the back side so you can see how big 
that screw, I mean, that rivet actually expands out. It is nearly three quarters of an inch wide versus a standard rivet, which just has a little bulb on the end of it. So, so this is why these rivets do such a great job of holding because the contact area is tremendous. It's roughly the same size contact area as the head of, of the rivet here. So these are really good rivets. You can get them off Amazon, get a bag of 50 or 100 for around $10 or so. But this just, just kind of shows you how all of this looks when you get it back together and you've got that rivet sticking on the back side. So when you, when you take the original screws out in the original holes, widen the hole a little bit, put your rivet in, take your rivet gun, and put your rivet. Do that at the top. Um, do that. Do, do rivet the top wall only. On the bottom, you want to put you a screw. Now, I, on the bottom, I most of the time I use these black-headed screws here, and you want to put a screw in on the bottom. Now, the reason you don't want to use a rivet on the bottom is because you've got to go through an eighth of an inch piece of angle iron. You've got to go through a a sixteenth of an inch thick piece of vinyl flooring and then there's a three quarter inch piece of OSB floor. Um, so when you put this rivet in and you expand it like we did here, this, this rivet is about one inch long from here to here. So if you're through three quarters of an inch piece of OSB, this rivet is just sticking out the underside and when you expand or when you pull it back through such as trying to set the rivet it's not going to expand like this it's not going to do anything because it's already meeting resistance of the floor so do not use these on the bottom the floor portion use the rivets on the wall portion that's about what thickness they're going through and you can see it expands pretty good so rivets on the wall screws on the floor so when you put your screw in before you put your screw in, get you some blue Loctite and put you just a dab of blue Loctite. I'm trying to do this one handed so it may not work good. Put you some blue Loctite and we're just going to screw it down. Slowly screw it down. Ah, uh, you hear that? When it does that, that's that torque chuck stripping out, not letting it get any tighter. And that's what you want. And this is a Porter cable, and I've got that set on number 12. Again, your mileage may vary. Your drill may not be like mine. But you can see that gets it all the way in. It doesn't over tighten it. You go slow so you don't break the, the screw off. You just turn this drill wide open and go straight down. Chances are, even though you've drilled the hole out, even though you've drilled the hole out, chances are you're going to break that that screw that you're putting in. You do not want to do that. All right. So on the original holes, where the screws came from the factory, you drill them out. Wall side, you put a rivet. Floor side, you put the longer screw. Do that all the way across. One screw at a time. You take one out, or you take a top and a bottom out, and you redo it kind of just like I did. I'm not going to put this rivet back in there. And... That gives you new rivets or gives you rivets and bigger screws in the existing original 14 holes. Seven on the top, seven on the bottom. Now you go back in between. So remember I said these come from the factory every 12 inches. So you're going to go back in between every six inches. Every six inches. And you're going to um, drill a new hole in the bottom and in the top or in the floor portion and in the wall portion. Use your same 3 16 drill bit or whatever size drill bit you needed for your screws. And the only thing you do is come here every six inches about halfway up from the bottom from the bend in the angle line to the top about halfway drill your hole here and then in this case, just to show you, you would drill you another one here. So you would drill one here, 
one here every six inches there's double the amount of screws that that are in the wall now that were there from the beginning they're probably 50 percent bigger diameter screws than what was there means more holding power they're probably a inch i'm sorry a half inch or three quarter inch longer than what was there especially the ones going into the floor now they're actually going all the way through the osb you've got rivets in place that are the expanding type rivets so you you've got this holding or you've got a rivet which has got some extreme holding power here um this is a good fix right here um, start to finish once you have your tools and screws and parts and everything this part here is probably going to take you about an hour <clears throat> um, clean up and everything else um, not not too shabby not too shabby at all all right hope this helps out and good luck